Welcome back to the Game of Thrones mod. Oh, it's so spicy. I'm so glad I waited a while before we got an event, before I actually kicked this episode off here. So, Lord Michael of Wendwater has provided me with proof that Lord Dale of Bluegrove has been viciously slandering me. So, our current character, Lord Paramount Monsoon the Elegant, his life's goal is to empower the Storm God Faith that his father, Lord Gallard, Bought to the people of, of the Stormlands once again. The resurrection of House Durand and bought with it the worship of the Storm God faith. We're currently sitting at quite a few vassals, aren't we? With the uh, with the Storm God, or I should say uh, High Lords, Dukes, if you will. Who have, uh, well, High Lord and Duke isn't the same thing. But in this, they're, they're just called Lords. It's kind of confusing. But anyway, um, the Lords are that worship the Storm God. I think we've got two of them right now, for what I recall. So we've got Lord Morton Butler, who is a Storm God worshipper. We've got uh, Lord Edwin Foghurst, who's another Storm God worshipper, and obviously ourselves as well. We're trying to get, because we were able to revoke this guy's duchy level title, we've got another duchy that we can set up here if we can get land within that to give to someone to set them up as a new vassal. Last episode, we started off this plot to incite Lord Dale to revolt because the crown has started to... Um, militarized a little bit, it started to pass laws, it started to, uh, to to pass a lot of bureaucracy that allows us to revoke titles. You know, the, the, the Iron Throne seems to be getting a little more tight gripped, but it means we, by extent, get access to the same laws, because our laws here are determined by the laws of the Crown Lands. Oh, the, sorry, the, the Iron Throne there. They have instituted limited brown authority. And there's your little recap for this episode. But more importantly, Lord Michael Wenwater has provided proof that the guy that we've been plotting against here, the guy that we're trying to get to revoke so we can revoke his, revoke his title... He has given us reason to arrest him. This is huge. This is actually fantastic. So, Lord Michael Wenwater is pointing me through. So, I think we just say, expose him and denounce him publicly, giving me reason to arrest him. We are also trying to, I assume then, sway our, yeah, we're trying to sway our liege as well, because obviously we are a, um, firstly, obviously we're a different religion. We're a threat to the Iron Throne. We have a claim on it. I don't know why. You guys sort of speculated. I was trying to work it out in between episodes, but I still can't entirely understand why we've got a claim on the Iron Throne. Um, we don't have any particular Targaryen relatives. The, the, the best thing that I saw someone came up with in the comments was that we're a dragon rider. And that's essentially all I've got to go on right now. So I need to look at what the conditions for getting a claim on the Iron Throne there. King Sandal was unmoved by my concern for him. So we do need to get him on side because he can... Also demand us not fight wars. Now, it's not legally binding. He can't put us in prison if we refuse to it. But it will piss him off. And obviously, the more we piss him off, the more chance we've got of uh, losing our head a little bit. So now, we can go to you and hit the imprison button. Why? But we have reason to arrest him. It just said we had reason to arrest him. Um. What do you mean? <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, it did show a picture of our wife. But it said that it was Lord... Dale? Am I going crazy? I'm going to have to watch that one back. So we did say Lord Dale of Bluegrove, this guy here. I don't know why. I guess it's just an issue with that event. It was going for our plot target. It doesn't matter too much because we're 187% anyway. Oh. A Lord Carl of Dragonstone. So this guy has adopted uh, his Baratheon heritage. How? Uh, so he's like Stannis' great-grandson or something like that. It doesn't matter too much. Some will still doubt his legitimacy. House Baratheon's still kicking around quite strong with 18 living members because obviously Robert Baratheon died a lot later than he was supposed to in the main series. Stannis and Renly both have many, many children as well. They did their duty. My reputation is ruined, but this guy's supposed to be a slanderer. Oh, and the plot failed. God damn it. Okay. Um... So we've just got to keep trying until eventually we do Insight Revolt, because that's the only way you can revoke titles. We fabricated trees and we called him for trial, and it was uh, only if that trial goes in our favour can we then revoke the title, but that apparently was found not guilty, which, to be fair, it was a plot against him, so he wasn't actually guilty. Uh, but, but you know, you can't argue that when he rises up in, in Rebellion that he is definitely guilty, because, you know, he actually rose up in Rebellion. Luckily, we're backed by a lot of the other High Lords. Like I said, because we've been uh, sort of putting these Stormguard vassals on our... On, uh, on on the, the, the higher seats of the realm. It, it's backing us quite well in, in other plots against other vassals. Lord Paramount Monson Durandon, I hereby invite you to attend the Tawny of Parchment. Sure, why the hell not? Ooh, there we go. Um, my eyes have discovered the bizarre and repulsive truth about Lord Dale of Bluegrass' sexual preferences. Oh, we can throw him in prison for that. I mean, I still don't think we're allowed to imprison him, though, are we? Oh, we can. Now, this is good. I don't actually want to imprison him. We want to get the lower success chance. So what we could do is sack our Master at Arms and employ a really shitty one. I'm not going to do that because we've got 44% chance anyway. So fingers crossed he rebels. Shit. Come on. What if we release him? Can we then immediately just try and imprison him again? No, of course we can't. All right. Just keep trying to just keep going with the, with the treason, I guess, until eventually, hopefully, it will fire off. 
Do you want to place a bet? Now, I mean, there aren't really many safe bets anymore. So Bryce's bucklers turn to joust, but the crowd shock as he stumbles to the field late and clearly drunk from too much brown ale. We could wait a few rounds and put a... So, so Bruce Trent. This is some relative of Mel Merrin Trent, I assume, or some distant relative anyway. Um, so, Bru so, so we could put a... a, a bet on Sir Bruce here. I was kind of going to wait a couple of rounds and see who was the better fighter. So this guy looks better to me. Strong knight. We could put a bet on him, actually. Uh, let's try it. Why not? Uh, these are ridiculous odds. The odds are offering uh, 8 to 10 that Sir Sebastian Granison will prevail from among the two. So actually, we'll take a bet on Seb Wait. 8 to 10 on him. So we have to vote on Sebastian. Oh, right. No, no. This is the guy that of course we want. Sure. Let's go for it. He fought well. Let's see how he does. My bet has been lost. No, this guy apparently destroyed him even though he was a knight and a strong fighter and had higher personal combat. Well, there we go. What a waste of goddamn gold. Nyarlathep favors Acolyte Monsoon. The great and mighty Nyarlathep has given us so much. Now it's time to return the favor, capture and sacrifice a servant of the Storm God. Oh, I'm not a fan of that though. Um... Sacrifice her. Oh, he's our rival. Because he's got the the red, you know, sort of generic angry anime uh, symbol there. I, I do like these. I think they're quite useful. Any any sort of easy information at glance is always good. Uh, no, we're going to keep... No, no, no. Keep spying on him. Definitely. Someone doubt a legitimacy. Lady Lysera of Dragonstone. Okay, so the Baratheons are having some sort of interregnum right now. Do we want to flip over? Do we want to keep spying? Because it's probably not helping out that much. It's giving us entry plus two, plot power increase plus 2.5%. As we move up through the society, we're going to get that anyway. I don't think I can turn my back on the Storm God like this. Unless there's a priest that hates us for some reason. Um, I mean, the priest of Storm's End is not a big fan of us. We could get rid of you. I mean, it's it's all for the good of the future. I'm sorry. It's it's so that we can get intrigue and it's so that we can try and kill these guys off. The Storm God will understand. We're, we're killing off the Storm God's minions so that we can directly solve some of the Storm God's problems. And then we uh, sacrifice Nyarlathep. There we go. Plunge my knife into his chest. Excellent. And that gave us 200 power, I believe it is. So, the dark power seemed more or less entirely the same. Tainted touch is obviously incredibly useful for if we make any enemies. Demonic possession is also incredibly useful. Can we demonically possess our liege? Um, apparently not. How, how? What is it you can target that with? Is it just courtiers? or It's courtiers and unlanded characters, I believe it is. So, the way you used to do it in, in CK2 is like... Try and get uh, or possess your own cardinal and try and get him elected. And then you would get the Pope in your pocket who would give you just a load of uh, load of claims. But I'm not sure how it works in this one. We'll have to keep an eye on it. It's been a long time since I played the Devil Worshippers because they're not good in the base game. They seem a little different in this one though. I guess there's probably less suspicion about you being magical in a world where magic actually exists, huh? Nice. Thank you, Renly the Seemly. Perfect. Uh, just random Stormlander again. We are going to have to kick you out, unfortunately. Excellent work. Change the tunnel by 10. Now, the one thing we were trying to do as well is get clans on Stone Dance. Why did we stop doing that? Oh, it's probably because we wanted to remove our Dishonor. Okay, now that we've done that, let's send you back over there. That's the last Holy Site we need. Then we've just got to raise moral authority, which we can do in a whole bunch of different ways, huh? Um, now, can we declare war? We have no valid caster spell, eh? Okay, do we have any claims at all we could press? Like, weak claims? Um... Kingdom of the Seven, absolutely not. So we can claim a whole bunch of places. Oh, in fact, we could claim something for our vassal there. We're being going to war with the Reach, and the Reach and the Westerlands are the two most powerful um, kingdoms in the Seven Kingdoms, so I'd rather not if we could avoid that. Um, what else have we got here around? Uh, Lodge of the Red Dunes, that could be good. I'm looking for a claim specifically from our vassals. Oh, nice, we claim Duskendale, seriously? That's a lot of land we'd pick up, but we would have one very powerful vassal under us there. That's a lot of land. I might do that. They've only got 5,000 men. And again, what's our lord going to do there? Nothing. Not, he can't do anything specifically. That's tempting. Okay, what else have we got? Um, nothing for those guys. Again, I'm looking for vassal claims. Go for Crabshaw. That's not one of our... What's Crabshaw? Um, for, for one of our vassals' vassals. Okay, it's all the way up here. That doesn't count as one of our holy sites, does it? Wait, Crabshaw... Shelton, Shorston, wait, wait, where are our holy sites again? Let me just refresh my memory here. So we go to us and let's take a look. Okay, so we've got one there and then where's our last holy site? So one, two, three, four. Oh, King's Landing, of course. Right, okay. Well, obviously we're not going to be able to get that one anytime soon, so we'll ignore that one for now. Um, we've got Greenmont, we've got... So it looks like... Yeah, that's Crabshaw again. I think that the place that we have the option to take the whole duchy is a pretty glorious war goal, huh? I think we should absolutely grab that. We've also got the grassy veil for like multiple different people. Duskendale seems huge. That's a big chunk of the crown lands we're going to get as well. That's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different provinces. 
That's an insane amount of land. Well, it's just Duskendale, though, so I don't know why Rosby is included unless they're a vassal. No, they can't be a vassal under them. I don't know why that's included. Um, very strange. Should we go for it? It's only 5,300 men, and again, or 5,003 men. They can't get us to stand down. 5,030. They can't get us to stand down because it's not legally binding. This is just free real estate. Oh, excellent. I'm a big, big fan of this. Just expected my diplomats were able to convince King Sandor of what an honourable and trustworthy ruler I am as I grab more land from within the realm. Incredible. And then, of course, the more we expand out, the more people we're going to get in our court with potentially... Like, so he can... He has no legal right to demand this. Absolutely not. Thank God we sent those diplomats when we did, because now it's basically cancelled out the... Um, you know, the result of refusing to surrender to him there. Or more powerful, the Stormlands, as far as I'm concerned. Stormlands come first, Stormgod comes second, which might sound a little bit heretical, but they're basically one and the same, right? The more powerful the Stormlands become, the more powerful we can make the Stormgod religion. It should not be difficult to smear Lord Dale, given his cruel disposition. Everybody needs to be reminded of his ruthless attitude. We'll antagonize him by mocking his character. Ooh, he wants us to fight. I mean, surely we're going to kill him, right? We've got 35. This might have been a mistake. Um, he's got 25. Okay. It's going to be close, but I think we've got him. We've got a dragon, so how could we lose? Probably not very sporting now that I think about it to... We don't need we don't need this many men. I'm going to be honest. Probably not very sporting now that I think about it to take a dragon to a one-on-one -on -one duel. I imagine that's probably frowned upon in West... In Westerosi culture, this is considered a dick move. Right, okay. Speaking of dick move, we're going to turn up with a dragon and torch this random high lord. Doesn't seem entirely fair. Or random... Sorry, duke. I, uh, high lords are kings in this, or lords are kings. Lord Paramount. It's very confusing. Everyone's a fucking different variant of lord. I'm not giving very much luck. I'm not getting very much luck spying on Lord Dale. Um, no, I'm sure he's up to something. We are going to move over to uh, business as soon as possible. I believe we're at roughly the amount of wealth now where debasing mints will be worthwhile. Right, okay. Oh, chance of getting... Ooh, patient I'll take. Uh, thank you. Holy shit. Tristan has turned up. He's a brother of the Night's Watch, so God knows why he's here. I also don't particularly want to fight him. Um, this lady will fight him for us, our half-sister, Lady Fog. <gasps> Thank you for defending me, Lady Fog. So that's what our bodyguards are for, essentially. Some of you wanted, I saw a comment asking what the bodyguards do. They do them that, which is quite useful. Uh, Lady Fog has decided to marry a priest. I accept their marriage. She saved my life. Might have saved my life, so we'll, we'll let her have that one. And then turn up Torture with the Dragon, and then hand it over to our vassal there, who's going to be very happy about things. We can't torture with our dragon. Why? Probably because it's under our liege, right? Oh, God, we've still got loans to pay off. Shit. Um, oh, the dragon died. I completely forgot about that. Man, that's made me sad now. Oh, well, we can assault that one down. It's not it's not ideal, but it's not that we're going to get into wars anytime soon. Thank you. Uh, she's now gone to the Night's Watch? Lady Vanessa of the Night's Watch. What the fuck are you talking about? So this is all ours? It is. <gasps> Look at that. That's nice. I don't know what's going on with this one, though. Duskendale has the Night's Watch. High Lordship of the Wall. Um... Has the wall fallen? No. Oh god, what's happened? Um, I actually have no idea. I might need to fix this, because this may cause us some bugs, I think, in the future. Well, they are now at least the Night's Watch, which is something they still count as the Night's Watch. We've got a Lord Commander again. He's got no court or anything, because we've... I've, I've you know, had to try and put this together as best as possible. Um, he still counts as a Liege of King Sandor, and it's his heir. Hmm, there may, there may need to be some things affected by this. Hopefully it will... Oh, there it goes. It's up in title. So it is fixing itself. It's just a little bit of a shame that, that something very strange happened there. Hopefully it doesn't bug the game anymore. That would be kind of nice. I'm not having much luck spying on Lord Dale. Uh, yeah, this is pointless. Let's move away from this now. Uh, it, I mean, the plot's going to fire eventually anyway. We've just got to kind of pray and hope for the best. Send out a little bit of gold. How much do you want? 17 gold to increase the plot by 13%. You know what? I'll take it. Why not? Okay, so... Let's uh, move to the business focus then, because the business focus, honestly, is going to be able to let us bribe. When can we do that? Oh, shit, we can still go about two years. Um, we could start... <sighs> Who else could we go for? We could spy on our liege. I don't know if that's a safe idea, but we might as well. We might find something about it. We might be able to blackmail him or something. I'm not sure how this works, but we can give it a go. We've got to do something with it, right? The best thing you can actually do with the uh, intrigue focus, they may have patched this by now. There'll be certain characters out there in the... Oh... Oh, wow. He's trying to be plot to kill Lord Oss for the rude. Um, knowledge is power. I can call off my spies. Uh, sure. Oh, God. Is that what we did? Because we unveiled this great plot. Incredible. Okay, we're now the leader of the cult of the story wisdom. All two of us. Seriously, it's me and my, my boy, Blue Dog. Um, what is going on with... Th this society seems a little bit like we should leave. But it's given us... To be fair, it's given us plus three intrigue. So... 
I mean, I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> the intrigue bonus is quite nice on top of everything else, and it's going to allow us to fire our plots a lot quicker. Sure, we don't need to use the dark magic anyway, so we, we might not get caught. And we could summon a familiar and that type of thing when we get enough dark power eventually. So that's okay. You know what? I'll just roll with it for now. I think it's fine. I shall attend it, which will be entertaining. We'll just pretend we're working with this good guy we've, we know called Blue Dog, who's teaching us a little bit about dark magic. That's all. Who doesn't dive into a little bit of dark magic from time to time? He's trying to fabricate a climb on the Kingdom of the Reach. Our plot is revealed. Absolutely. Let's just keep keep fucking this guy over. I mean, it's a shame we can't do anything more like blackmail him with it and say, hey, I know about your plot. Why don't you give us some gold and we'll shut up about it? But guess not. Um, so like I was saying, the best thing you could do, there used to be characters that were landed and unlanded that'll have a lot of gold. Random courtiers would just end up amassing thousands and thousands of gold if those courtiers had kids. Obviously, that would generate... It would be kind of difficult to find, but there would be certain characters within the round with even hundreds of gold or artifacts too. You could spy on them, you could kidnap them, you could uh, then revoke their stuff and, and execute them, and, and you'd inherit their gold, invite them to court, and then and then do that against them. It used to work out pretty well. I don't know if you could do it in the Game of Thrones mod, but uh, if we can find someone with a high amount of gold, there might be a strategy we might want to try and implement. I should try and endear myself to the king. Of course we will. Wonderful. There we go. We're almost... Oh, no. That was minus 16 after the fact, huh? That's not very good. I thought we got back up to sort of like almost zero there. Look at the realm. The realm's doing quite well, considering that we are a, a dark wizard intent on trying to cause nothing but, you know, revolts and revolutions. Minus 100. Why are these people not joining the plot? Oh, hang on. Let's auto stop and then reinvite. Let's try that again. I thought that was him that joined the plot against himself then. We've got other people to bribe. We're just going to have to just wait and pray, essentially. Oh, come on. You guys have one job. She died. What happened to a dragon egg then? So this is the the, the branch house, obviously, of, of our house there. Our father's uh, granddaughter via our our sister. Okay, so our niece, essentially. It's probably the easiest way to say that. Where did the dragon egg go? Uh, to her child. Yeah. Anissa Bellani. We need to probably marry you off as soon as possible then, huh? So let's... Uh, we'll, we'll mark your special interest. What about her other son? He's also Valyrian. Interesting. Let's mark both of those special interests because those are very, very useful. In fact, we could probably make them our guardian or something and try and turn them into uh, pretty decent characters here. What are we good at? We're good at intrigue. Right, Monsoon educate him and Monsoon educate her, seeing as apparently... Oh, shit. I was going to say seeing as we haven't got any kids of our own, but... Um, or seeing as all of our kids are educated was what I was actually going to say, but wait. What have we already got? A ward? Oh, no. we got to wait for the first one to be accepted, huh? What? It's not worth dying if there's no afterlife. How cynical can you get, huh? Oh, speak of the devil and it shall appear. Okay, there we go. I was going to say, because all our kids are educated, but then I remember we've also not married our son off. So we'll, we'll educate these other distant relatives, like our our great niece. Yeah, I think it would be at this stage, huh? So let's find our son, a wife first and foremost, and see what we've got here. So let's go for genius. There's got to be somebody kicking around, right? Um, so by age, and let's go for... So he's 22. I mean, generally, anybody would be fine. A wildling woman? She's a wildling, which is incredible. Um, is there, if there's genius plus anything else, I'll take it. Um, so actually, all, of we, all we've got here is genius. Genius, honorable, humble, authoritative. She's very good. Uh, she's not related to anybody particularly. Uh, she's not related to any lords, let's put it that way. You'll do, because you've also got good stats. And, and being honorable as well does tend to help. What if we just abduct her? Let's abduct her until we can afford... To, uh, until we can afford to buy a favor from her, at which point we'll buy a favor from her. Why are we losing so much gold? Oh, we're not. I thought I said minus five gold a month then, but it's minus 0 0.5. We're just still incredibly poor. Ooh, a grand tournament of King's Landing is, is very much worth going to. And seeing as we are the High Lord of the Stormlands, we basically kind of have to go. It's more of an obligation than an invite. Uh, somebody died. This guy's now excommunicated. Okay, so you oversee the realm. Um, we're still collecting taxes. Man, we're just so poor. It's unbelievable. We're still proselytizing, but you are garbage so let's sack you in favor of anybody else all right and then uh fingers crossed eventually things are we're gonna we're gonna get some sort of wife for our son or our distant valyrian relatives here and try and keep that going as well well it took what felt like years but we finally got a chance for the plot to succeed 60 percent chance obviously i'm gonna take it ah oh, for god's sake we failed again <sighs> this guy's gonna friggin die before we get this Insight Revolt, it's 222%. Come on. Your vassal, Sir Everyone of Summerfield, is arguing with his wife. Oh, I should intervene, sure. I should be grateful for my help, not that it, it's not annoyed him or anything. Surely we can get this done. 258%. Sure, I'm curious about his faith. I'm not losing any more prestige. Disgraceful, he's not interested. Share my knowledge of statesmanship with him. Apparently, we're really trying to sway this guy to our cause. There we go. 
Oh my god, he's actually has a positive opinion of us. I'll take it. That means if we want to push any more weak clans or whatever, we actually can try and do that. Justicia, you need to be back over fabricating clans. We're not getting very lucky. We're genuinely really not... I oh, take that back. We, we really are. Um, forced marriage between her and Boris. Boom. Welcome. Welcome aboard. There we go. Perfect. Uh, Lady Lasan has been sent a tick six months to torment me once more. Spreading vile rumors about me. I know exactly what she's trying to do. Um, I would like to for you not to be so mad. So here, look after my swans. That's known for being uh, a, a good thing to have to do. Huh? Just horrible, vicious waterfowl. You're welcome, by the way. A son was born. Walter. Oh, shit. He's sickly. Uh, fine. Thrift for you, Walter. Uh, trying to think. What, what's like a weak storm? I don't know if we've had Breeze, but I'm going to roll with Breeze because he's weak. He's sickly. He's not worth anything. He's not a genius. He must attempt to save my Breeze. You don't have to. Really not too concerned. Oh, wow. The High Septum has declared an anathema upon your rival Lord Dale Stademon. It's been excommunicated. Come on, people People want him gone now. There we go. Storm got praised for our good fortune. That's not good fortune. If he was genius, then it'd be good for fortune. I will spread false reports to his spies. Ooh. Plot power defense minus 10%. We're at 292%. This has got to work. This has got to work. Plot is revealed. Plot's been ended again. Automatically. <laughs> oh my god. How unlucky are we getting with this character? This plot's failed multiple times. We haven't fabricated a claim yet. We've had no sun with... Genius. Spread some more forest reports. Okay, 70%. Thank you. Holy shit. That took ages, but we've actually finally done it. Right, so I believe the rally point is set to Storm's End anyway. So we'll just send them over there. Um, he's going to try and smash the troops. We're going to set those guys down. Can't believe we succeeded. So when we've got this guy dealt with, we can revoke his title. Hopefully, I'm, I'm understanding that this is how it works properly. Revoke his title, and then after we've done that, we can uh, land a new Storm God vassal. It's not ideal, but even if we only get one guy per episode, it's only going to take us a, a, like a, a couple of episodes to get a fully Storm God Stormlands, which is going to be pretty nuts, I think. Being able to do that much religious alteration over the course of just a just a couple of characters, that's pretty crazy. Especially when Westeros and, and Game of Thrones in general is quite difficult to religiously convert people because there's no demand religious conversion or anything like that. Religion is a lot more of a... Or, or there's no any cultural conversions either. It's a lot more of a sort of set-in-stone style thing. Enforce demands. Welcome. Can we now? Revoke title is a traitor. Our vassals do not object. Oh my god, we've actually done it. Holy shit. And that's all it took. All it took was becoming a dark wizard, ascending to the heights and learning all they've got to teach us. And now we go, men of my religion, my culture. And then we give them, search realm, unlanded steward preferably. Axel is okay. Uh, this guy's probably better, but Lucian has grey eminence. Oh god, we're slim pickings here, huh? He's 29, but he is a god of the storm worshipper. My friend, I give you the high lordship of Rainwood. May it serve you well. And along with it, I grant you a wife. Just any wife, please, for the love of God, marry someone so that we don't lose everything. Uh, she's groomed. She'll do. Uh, boom. There you go. Please have many babbies and spread the storm of religion for years and years to come. Excellent. So now, this is so cool. So let's go to our realm. Let's say ruler, yes. And look at how many are... Let's go ruler, yes. And let's see how many are our religion. So we want to search... Wait, is this the entire... Fuck's sake. I want to search just my realm, my guy, but of course we can't because we're under the Iron Throne. Why don't we just go a bit away to educate in my religion group? So we've got uh, one, two, three High Lords now under the Gods of the Storm. Can we check the religion map? What if we break it down again? The religion map is useless when we're under the Iron Throne. God damn it. Um, okay, so let's look at Dijon High Lordships. That's probably the easiest way. So Summerfield we've converted. The Dornish Marches we've converted. Yeah. Uh, then we've also got the Rainwood. Why don't we start working on Cape Wrath next? Move from south to north for no reason at all besides the fact that it's just kind of the alright thing to do, huh? So what we want to do is incite to revolt on basically everybody. Unfortunately, this guy is immune to it because he needs to have a lower opinion, at which point we just antagonize him. Incredible. That's a cool combination of mechanics there. Let's start working on the next one. I'm not going to stop until every vassal in the round worships the Storm God. And of course, we found out something about him, or at least we're going to make something up. He's, uh, uh, he's actually secretly a prostitute in the brothel. There we go. General opinion minus 10. Still not going to help out too much because we need to antagonize him a little bit more first. Um, let's ask Sandor to join us in Storm's End. This lady's trying to antagonize us. We can talk in private. Then we gain... Ooh, Diligent. That's cool. Um, we can try and make him patient, but it will give him minus 20. Um, 
Hope I haven't got you away from any important work. There we go. It's 30 opinion of us now because we both got diligent. I see. Cool. Um, giving us a reason to arrest him is very, very good because that means if we fail to arrest him, 46%. Now, I am almost certain that if we sack our marshal, there's a higher chance of success, or a lower chance of... No, it's not. Man, I'm, I'm bullshitting you. I've lied. How is it we do that, then? What does it increases or lowers arrest chance? We could just give it a go. This would be incredible if he immediately revolts. Come on. 46%. <gasps> Holy shit, we might be able to get two Storm God vassals in, in just today. This is big. This is huge for the realm. Right, everybody uh, immediately run as fast as you can. And then I know exactly what she's trying to do, so we'll ignore her antagonizing nature. The High Septum has declared Desmira Tyrell. So she is, what, Mace Tyrell's great-granddaughter or something like that? Um, oh, man. Well, Paramount Luther, there's a Lena. Oh, no, he's like... Wait, so Luther's son, Mace. Oh, wow, it's Mace's sister's... Great, so it's like Mace's great great niece or something like that. Anyway, some thugs are hired to bring me Lord, Lord Michael alive. <gasps> He's traveling around incognito, mingling with the common folk. He'll only be protected by two loyal friends. If we abduct him, that. Oh, god damn it, that would have been so good because that would have just ended the war immediately. We did Jamie Lannister him, spoilers for Game of Thrones season two, I think. Man, that would have been awesome just to grab him prisoner and then immediately roll with that. Anyway, uh, it's not like it's too much difficult to deal with this war anyway, but obviously when our troops are raised, it's going to cost us a little bit of cash there. Right, move in. And take him out. Mark and Lady Fog named Dennis. I do not care. But after this, I'd like to do a little bit of uh, management as well for our people, making sure that our sort of Valyrian descendants, our Valyrian cousins, are, are married off. They're in line to certain things. It'd be nice to get them landed as well. If they were, if they worship the Stormwind, I'd happily land them. News from Castle Lock of the Trial by Combat. William Garner demanding trial by combat from his captain, Lord Paramount, Martin Westerling, selecting Sir Kevin as his champion. And uh, something happened. I'm not going to I'm not gonna care about random trials by combat. Thank you. Don't ever tell me again. Right, I saw it down. We lost a lot of troops. Release all prisoners. He's in hiding because he's a coward, but that is proven to the realm. Why he needs to go. Why we need to revoke his titles. Revoke. High Lordship. Boom. Now, I think we have to do that again, don't we? Oh, no, we can revoke both because he actually went into full-on rebellion. Now, this is great. Because now you know what? It's exactly the same thing again. Search all, reset all. Let's load filter uh, two. Diplo range rule or no men? Yes. And then my religion, my culture. We'll go ahead and save that as filter two. Sort by stewardship. Axel, treasurer of Summerfield. Your time has come, my friend. High lordship of Cape Wrath. That's incredible. So when what up to now? Four high lords. And how many high lordships are there in Storm's End? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're almost halfway there. I mean, if you round up, we are halfway there. If you round down from Half of nine. We're halfway there <laughs> to controlling it. Now, we don't even have Griffin's Roost, so that one's fairly irrelevant. What is Griffin's Roost, and why don't we have it? Um, oh, this area. We'd have to revoke one of these, starts one of these guys, and we want to do it anyway, to be fair. So maybe Sir Dickon could uh, be Sir Dickoff, perhaps, and uh, we could perhaps remove him from his position, and then when we control it, we can make the High Lordship, and then when we... You know, make the High Lordship. We, we already control this, so we can just dish it to someone else immediately. This is big. So let's take a little time to look at our dynasty and make sure everything's aligned there. So Lord Boris of the Stormlands, his wife is uh, fine. I hope they like one another. But anyway, that's uh, she, she's a very good wife. Obviously, she, she's younger than him very slightly, but she's got genius. And that's all we really care about here. So we've got Michael. Okay, we don't care about you anymore. Um, I would even ransom you out. No one wants to pay it. Hilarious. Uh, she's irrelevant because we've already got her to court. So we've got... Verano Villani, our nephew or grandnephew or something. So our nephew's son, so our, yeah, our grandnephew. Um, I want to find you a marriage immediately and make sure that your dynasty is alive. Sorry, betrothal. Make sure your dynasty stays alive. Marry him off to one of our daughters. Keep things keep things strong. Keep the bloodlines intertwined a little bit more. We've got Anissa Villan. Um, it's arranged marriage between you as well. So we're going to betroth you off matrilineally to ensure that your bloodline is staying alive. You can have one of my random sons. Sure. None of these kids are in line anyway, and they never will be. Not considering another offer from us. Oh, we have to wait for the first one first. My, my mistake. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you very much. And we're going to keep the houses sort of interlinked, but we'll only do this every sort of three or four generations to avoid becoming horribly inbred. Um, right, so marry you off to... How old is she? She's seven. She can marry Breeze, who's one. It's a six-year difference. That's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Perfect. All right, good. So those are now married off. Our sons are married off by extent. Good, good, good. Our son... Everything's fine. 
Look, you're doing well. Do you like my do you like my dynasty management point? That's something I very rarely do, but I'm I'm pretty heavily invested in this campaign. I think we're doing a pretty good job of converting the whole Stormlands. And again, it's all the behind the scenes stuff, the intrigue, the spying, the 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 hidden cults. Although it is fairly pointless, we might want to leave this cult at some stage. Can we not even summon a familiar? Uh, summon familiar. The power of magic has faded. That's why this cult is so garbage. I never even considered that. That's why we can't take it in touch. Ma there's no magic in the world, and we're a dark mage. There's no wonder nobody wants to be part of this bloody thing. What a fool I am. I mean, it's good for the plus three. All it's given us is plus three intrigue. That's it. We can't get anything else out of this cult. I think it would be better to join, what, like the Alchemist Guild? Or, or the Citadel, maybe? Even the Citadel, I think, would be a little better, huh? I'm not sure. I'll, I'll take a look and sort of decide at the time. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed playing it. I really have loved bringing back all the Storm Lords. And obviously, we've got still a long way ahead here. We've almost got... The intrigue game lockdown, sort of working behind the scenes, putting all these guys on their new thrones. Don't think the Iron Throne really cares too much, probably because of all of our swaying and uh, keeping things going here. We might want to move away from our society onto something a bit more appropriate, though. In the meantime, let's give a shout out to the insane patrons for making the series possible. Now, I will point out, I have to type up these lists every week because the CSV file, Patreon send out of all of the patron backers, is fucking useless to be honest with you uh so i've typed this all up by hand i've tried to remember all of the names people have asked for if they want a different name shouted out than what is on patreon of course if you want that as well feel free to get in touch and i'll i'll change that as soon as i can i think i've remembered them all if i haven't please let me know and i apologize in advance for those of you i've forgotten but again i have to do it all by hand so uh it's not particularly useful but thank you for your support and a big shout out to the insane top tier level patrons Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Sudini, Conspired T, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Escape, Eric B, Facundo Vasquez, Harik, Hey Dog, Jimbo, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Micro Mullen, M <laughs> Michael Mullen, Necrophilum, Pelvis Prezi, Sir Thor the Swede, Tom Terror 18, Vacuous Bacchus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support and the insane on Patreon. It's going to take me a while to get used to these new lists as per usual, because when you say uh, the same list every day, three times a day, and then it changes order very slightly, does strange things to the mind. Okay, it's going to take me a while to get used to that. But a big shout out as well to Andrew Wilson, Bethlehem's Max, Sidini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders. Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Gray, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Israel is the dot dot dot, Jay Lara, that's what it says, I have no idea what the full name is, Jay Lara, James Barnes, You're Under Freeze, Jordan Campbell, John Holiday, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Llewellyn Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Smirt Worm, The Insane Pickle, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico. Thank you all for your support and the insane lovers on Patreon. That's a pretty crazy list, huh? That's a, that's a long old list. I think it's about the longest it's ever been. So, uh, thank you. I'm going to be dead within a week if I have to read these every single time. I'm going to do it. And that's my sacrifice to you guys. You're welcome. Thanks.